Good morning, St. David's family. Good morning. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We come to worship him and him alone. Hope you're ready to do that, to bless him, lift his name above all names. But before we do that, just a few announcements. And I mean a few, but your bulletin has a lot in it. It's always updated every week for you. There's new things. There's updated things. So please read the entire thing. Be focused on that prayer list, too. We want you to be praying for our church family and community. So that I'll have some additions for that prayer list in a moment. But tonight, we want you to come back between the hours of 6 and 7.30. You pick the time. We want you to meet a new family to St. David's, and that's the Grebian family. Uh, Seth is our new uh, director of Youth and Family Ministries, a part-time position with us. Uh, you haven't seen him here in public ministry. Uh, there's a reason for that. He's still pastoring a church. And even before he applied for the position here, he was planning to leave his church ministry there. And, um, and so he's still functioning as a pastor at that church. He's been here on Wednesday nights. Several of you have met him on Wednesday nights as he ministers with the Elevate Youth Group. And so we want you to meet his family. And so come on out and join us uh, from 6 to 7.30. We'll have some light refreshments and an informal time, uh, not a really a program plan, just you coming, meeting the family, and, and greeting them and loving them like you always do anybody that comes to St. David's. So we hope you'll do that tonight between 6 and 7.30. It says 6 to 7.00. I noticed that. That's a typo, 6 to 7.30, okay? And I hope you'll come and join us. Also, if you don't know, we have a yard sale that we hold annually here. Almost, I guess, now about 20 years now it's been going on. And um, it's a blessed time. I know you enjoy working together and blessing the community, blessing each other. And that's coming up May 19th and 20th. Read that announcement in the bulletin. There's, again, food items and baked items. There's some sign-up sheets out there. Why don't you let us know what you're going to uh, donate to that. Uh, donated items from your household, you can do that. Uh, again, contact Rich or Kelly Funk about those details. Now, Monday through Thursday, uh, 5.30 to 7.30, will be dates then to now also be here for the sorting. We had a good bit of dropped off from the different yard sales that needs to be processed. So again, thank you for your service in advance. Uh, tell others about the yard sale. Well, they say, well, I don't need anything. Just say, well, do you eat food? Do you like food? Uh, they should. So tell them to come out and join us on that day. It is a great time. Pray for that outreach. It's an outreach. It's a way for us to find some uh, introduction to the community in this way. Uh, it's a way for us to introduce our VBS to the community and sign them up. So again, be in prayer for that. Be active in whatever you can do in that ministry. And um, let me give you some prayer requests. Uh, we want you to add to your prayer list Audrey Moore, uh, M-O-H-R is the spelling of the last name, and Audrey is Linda Abel's sister-in-law who lives in Kansas. And she's undergoing surgery on Wednesday. Okay, will you remember Audrey in your prayers? Also, we ask you to add one of our sisters here from St. David's, Arlene Knob. Arlene Knob called me on Friday and informed me that she's been diagnosed with walking pneumonia. So uh, they are treating her. They've upped her antibiotics, added some different antibiotics. So pray for Arlene and a full recovery for her. Also, we sent out an invitation to join a work team, a temporary work team here at St. David's to bless a sister here at the church, Denise Desitels. Denise needs some landscaping work done this month uh, at her trailer here in the community. We don't have a date and time set for that, but again, if you have an interest in helping and serving, just let me know and I'll get back to you on the day and time. Also, we'll publicize that too. So again, uh, help us out to bless a, a sister here at the St. David's family. That's all the announcements. I hope you'll stand and welcome one another as we come before the Lord in song.
Are we good? Can you, oh, can you hear me? Or? Oh. <laughs> Hello and uh, welcome to our service this morning on this beautiful Lord's Day. Um, we're so happy that you could join us and we're happy to be here and fellowship and worship with you. And if you were here last week, I apologize for that little uh, debacle. I'm thinking that it's not going to happen again <laughs> this week, hopefully. So anyway, we're going to start out this morning with My Redeemer Lives. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame taken away my pain is healed in his name I believe I believe I'll raise a banner my Lord has conquered the grave my Redeemer lives my Redeemer lives my Redeemer Redeemer lives. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. John 12, 30 to 32 says, Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Our next song is Lift Him Up. Said that by the 
show they will know where his disciples show his love all ye people show his love I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me lift him up all ye people praise the Lord all ye people show his love all ye people lift him up. And from Psalms 1 and 3, 8 to 12, it says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Think about his love. Think about his love, think about his goodness, think about his grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our lavish on us each and every day. No matter what we do, no matter what we say, you still love us. And we still can come to you and we still can chat with the God who made heaven and earth. We can bring our, our desires, our wants, our requests to you. And we know that you honor them. Thank you for walking with us each and every day. Help us, Lord, to enjoy your presence, to feel your presence and to walk with you. And we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning, St. David. It's good to see you all. These guys do such a great job. I love them. So, uh, last week, uh, my dear friend, Rico, passed away. Um, so, Pastor Pat was giving a message about the lesson of transplanting. So, he had asked me to do Ministry of Music. And um, I was really happy, too. It's been a while since I've been here. And I appreciate you guys having me back. Um, so when I heard that message of contention come in, I, one of my favorite bands is Mercy Me, um, Bart Miller, and he wrote this song, Even If. So I put a track together. I don't usually do this. Usually it's just guitar and vocal. Uh, but I put uh, a track together for you guys. Um, 
And I just hope it blesses you this morning. They say sometimes you lose them, sometimes you lose them, and right now, oh right now I'm losing them, stood on this stage night after night, mind in the broken Say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Good thing, little faith is all I am right now. God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable. Father, just thank you for gathering us all here. Lord, I ask that you would bless the message, bless the, uh, the body of St. David's. Um, and Lord, if you just help it to be lights through all of the seasons of our life. And in Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, everybody. Good to be here. Well, you take your Bibles and turn with me to Psalm 139. I'm sure it's a familiar uh, Psalm. 
Uh, we're going to start hearing in our sermons about Jonah. And today you're going to see a Jonah that wanted to run away. I mean, sometimes you want to run away uh, from God. And uh, you can't outrun God. You can't outrun God. And here's a psalm of King David that describes the omnipresence of our Lord and, and his grace upon us. So let's hear the first 17 verses of Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such wonder knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I flee from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Amen. The word of God. Let's worship in song with 497, near to the heart of God. We're going to excuse the children to junior ministries right now. 497, near to the heart of God.
O Lord, we proclaim in this song there is a place of quiet rest, comfort sweet, a place of full release, of joy and peace, where sin cannot molest, Satan will flee, because we have a Redeemer named Jesus. Lord, draw us close to you, near to your heart. Reveal yourself to us by word and spirit. Speak to the body of Christ here at St. David's and every body of Christ that assembles today. May they hear the pure gospel truth. May your spirit lead in your worship and the transformation of lives. Lord, we come with many burdens. Lord, we want to unburden ourselves, that there would be a, a rest for our souls and minds, and that we would have a sweet time with you every day. And Lord, we release these burdens to you for your will to be done. Help us to accept your will. Help us to promote your will, live within your will. Lord, our heart breaks as we hear the news, watch the news, receive news that how evil the world is, how wicked it is. We thank you that you've rescued us from a life that was damned, destined for destruction. But we have life in you, eternal life. But we still live in this world that is fallen and that sin reigns. Wickedness and evil reigns. So we pray, Lord, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. We hear just yesterday of lives taken in a mass shooting, Lord. Oh, Lord, touch those lives that are injured, those families that are grieving loss. Lord, we thank you for policemen emergency personnel that can respond. We ask for justice to be done. We ask for a protection in our land. And in the nations of the world, there is division and conflict and war. There's famine. There's loss, destruction. We come to the one who can heal, restore, revive, and renew we ask you, Lord, your will to be done. Use your church as a witness of your truth and light in this dark world. Now, Lord, may your spirit lead us in hearing your word and applying your word and go forth and proclaim your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, you take your Bibles, and I'm going to ask you to go to a book. You may have been gone there for a long time, the book of Jonah. We're starting a series today, four-part series on the book of Jonah. And uh, you may say, where is that? It's in the Old Testament, okay? It's near the end of the Old Testament. And if you're using the Pew Bible, I believe it's on page 654, if that'll help you. And uh, uh, we're going to be there each week uh, to uh, study the book of Jonah. It's only four chapters. Uh, some of your Bibles may only have it contained in two pages. Depends on the size of your print. But uh, uh, we want to look at the book of Jonah. And uh, while you're turning there, getting situated in, there is a sermon outline there to follow along with the points. But the scriptures will not be on the screen today, so you're going to need the word in front of you. Uh, and uh, we want to uh, uh, introduce to you the the series, I have a small song for you, a short song for you. Hopefully it'll play for you this morning. Uh, there we go. Hopefully, come on. And uh, there's a lot of songs about Jonah. I didn't know that were out there. And uh, this is one of them. So let's uh, see if we can do this here. This is for all ages. God said go to Nineveh, all those folks to win over. Jonah said, nah, not Nineveh. 
I don't like those sin lovers. God said go, Jonah said no. The storm went blow, Jonah said throw. And down he go into the depths of the sea. God said go to a fish, save my prophet, that's my wish. The fish said, oh, what a dish. Swallowed him whole in a single swish. God said go, the fish swam low through the flow. Jonah said, whoa, down he go into the belly of the fish. Jonah said, oh, what a mess. I've done things wrong, I must confess. I'm so low, I could die. But I know God hears my cry. Jonah said, oh, you brought me low. I'm sorry, so save my soul. And up he go, spat onto the beach. God said, go once again. Nineveh needs your word to repent. Jonah said, oh, I suppose all right. I'll tell them there's woe if they don't get it right. Jonah said, whoa, because God says no. The people went, oh, sorry, so save our souls. And God saved everyone. Jonah said, oh, no, I guess. God would forgive if they confessed. God's so slow to judge. He loves to forgive, never bears a grudge. God said go, Jonah said no. But God changed role, he washed their souls. Whiter than snow, cause rescues of the Lord. God said go, Jonah said no. But God changed role, he washed their souls. Whiter than snow, cause rescues of the Lord. Okay, I think I'm going to get Levi to, to lead you in that some Sunday, okay? If you didn't know the book of Jonah, you got it all in one song, one song there, and it's really catchy, isn't it? And uh, so uh, let's get out of that here and uh, get to where we belong here. So again, you know, I hope you're already now in uh, the book of Jonah. Again, it's only four chapters long. And uh, let's just start walking through the, the verses here. I think we've got 17 verses this morning. And we'll stop along the way and give some explanation and challenge here. So, again, we're at Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Christopher, are you there on your app? He, he had his Bible app with him. He said, what, what are you freaking on today? And I said, Jonah 1.1. 1, 1. He's got it on his new phone there, I guess. So Jonah 1.1, 1, 1, or your Bible there, uh, Christopher, all together we'll read together and follow along. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amate. So let's just stop there and get the context of where we're at. The timing, when in the history of the world is this happening? We're talking 18th century B.C., 18th century B.C., so really long ago, long ago. Uh, this is a true story. Some may think of it as allegory or fable or legend, uh, something to teach a lesson, but I believe it's true, okay? I really believe it's true. Uh, Jonah, his name means dove, dove. And the dove is a symbol of peace. Um, I'm not sure if you can associate peace with Jonah, but that's what his name means. Now, his father is a metai, and he, that means truth. So if you tie that all together, Jonah, the son of truth. So John, Jonah, the son of truth. Jonah is a called prophet of God. And uh, because of the story that we get about Jonah in this, this book, uh, some have labeled him the reluctant prophet. The reluctant prophet. You, I hope you even saw that in the song. Jonah kept saying, no. And that he's reluctant to do God's will. So that's why we call him the reluctant prophet. Now, is he only found in the book of Jonah, his name? No, you'll find it in the Gospels. Now, we'll return to that to next week, uh, what, what Jesus said about Jonah. But he's also mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 14, 23 through 25. And he was a prophet during the reign of Jeroboam, 
the second. And this is what we read. In the 15th year of Amazi, son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel, became king of Samaria. And he reigned 41 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord and did not turn away from any of the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel from Lebo Hamath to the Sea of the Arabah in accordance with the word of the Lord. The God of Israel, spoken through his servant Jonah, son of Amittai, the prophet from Gath Hefer. So there's just a description that we have a guy named Jonah who's a prophet of God during the reign of King Jeroboam II. King Jeroboam II, an evil king, led his people in sinfulness, wickedness, idolatry, uh, and uh, rebellion against God. Yet the country was prosperous under Jeroboam II. And he secured the, bo- the boundaries. Uh, there was economic prosperity, but they did not follow the law of the Lord. They rejected the Lord, followed other gods. And yet God raised up a, a servant named Jonah to bring the word of God to them. So we pick up again, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Verse 2, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Okay, let's stop and talk about Nineveh. Nineveh was a large city. Uh, It was in the capital of uh, Assyria, the Syrian Empire. Nineveh was known for its great wealth, power, and prestige. Uh, But the Assyrians were noted for their cruelty and idolatry. Um, And um, they worshipped a goddess named um, Assyria. And uh, today, you'll find it on the map, Nineveh. But you probably have heard in the news over the last maybe couple decades, a place called Mosul, Iraq. Mosul, Iraq. That was Nineveh, ancient history ago. So in Nineveh, is there a power, place of power, prestige of an empire, the Assyrians? But again, they were known for their cruelty to their enemies. They were cruel to Israel and the Jewish people. Uh, and um, so God says to his prophet, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to go to Nineveh, and it'd be like saying, uh, and he says, go to your arch enemy, okay? Those that, you know, do not like you, do not like your God, I want you to go and preach the gospel to them. That's what he's really calling Jonah to do. And Jonah, he hates the Assyrians. He hates those that hates his God and reject his God. You say, well, you can't blame them. But God says, I want you to go and preach against it. Tell them of their sin. Show them their sin. Because their wickedness has come up before me. So it'd be like if we put it in a modern context, God says to you, I want you to go to Russia, the arch enemy of America. It seems like that's what's been coming, right? The Cold War may be starting up again, whatever all that is, but... Let's just perceive that's a, an enemy there. And uh, I want you to go to Russia and tell them God loves them. They need to repent. God has salvation available for you. And you're saying, no, I can't do that. And that's what Jonah is doing with, we'll see next. Verse 3. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa which today would be modern-day Jaffa on the map in Israel, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. So if we're going to learn some things here, first thing I see we learn is God will often ask you to do things you don't want to do. 
Is that true? Yes. Yeah. God will often ask you to do things you don't want to do. Now, I mean, they're straightforward. We have the commandments. We have the principles, the precepts of Scripture, all that are there for us. And we say, I don't want to neglect that. I want to do that. But then sometimes when he puts us in a situation to live them out and bring that truth to others or bring his love to others, we say, "Mm." you know, there's people that maybe get under your skin, rub you wrong, but you have to work with them, live with them, associate with them. God may want you to do something special for them, uh, maybe a witness, a service to them. And it's like, "Mm, God, I really don't feel good about this. And you, you kind of want to run away or flee from God. I've met men and women through the years that um, God had a calling on their life, a, a, a specialized calling for ministry. And uh, I meet them then in their 50s, early 60s, and they've really stopped then running from God. They, they didn't want to do what God called them, wanted to call them to be a pastor or a missionary or a special servant of the Lord. Uh, I mean, they're serving in their churches. They're witnessing. They're doing things. But that special call upon their life, they just don't want to do. And they've lived in regret, and, and uh, they miss out on the blessed life. God will always see his will done with or without you, friends. But wouldn't it be great to be doing his will and be blessed doing his will? Okay, so God will often ask you to do things that you don't want to do. And I think the second thing we could see here is you can always find a boat sailing in the wrong direction. You can always find an excuse. God, I can't. I don't have the time. Am I hearing you right, God? You know, I don't have the time. I don't have the abilities. You ever been felt... You know, God leading you, you know, maybe somebody at church here that's leading a ministry or invites you to do something. You say, mm, I don't know if I can do that. Advertisement for VBS. Right, Donna? Step out of your comfort zone. Step out of the boat. Trust God. You know, there are always ways that we'll say, oh, there's a boat leaving here. I got to catch that. And you start to want to flee from God. Stop looking for an out. Just stop and start listening. Say, God, you, what do you want me to do? He'll never ask you to do something that he won't equip you for and prepare you for. So we know that Jonah is called by God to go to Nineveh. He lives in gath Hefer, and a short distance from there is Joppa. And he's going to go the opposite direction where God wants him to go. He's going to get a ticket to go to Tarshish. Tarshish is 2,500 miles away, okay? Whereas Nineveh, it's still a distance. That's 550 miles away, okay? So uh, he leaves. He wants to run away from God. Let's go back to verse 3 and catch up with them. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for the port, for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. You can never outrun the Lord, never flee the Lord. He's everywhere. We heard David say that in Psalm 139 today for us. Let's pick up verse 4. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Verse 5. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. So he's with a group we'll call pagans. Okay? They're, they're not the God-fearer of Israel's God. They, they have other gods, and they each called out to their gods. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone down below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. Deep sleep. I just wonder if he was depressed and God was heavy upon him 
because he's rebelling against God. You ever again, you ever said no to God and what he wants you to do? And it wears on you. And perhaps I'm not, you know, analyzing Jonah, but or it just kind of struck me. You know, he's down there sleeping. He's got a long journey anyway. But verse 6, the captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us and we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Maybe, you know, somebody got some sticks, some pieces of wood, and whoever gets the short stick, he's the one that must be the problem. So the, it comes and it fell, the lot fell on Jonah. So what, what can we see here in mind? God may send a storm to get your attention. God may send a storm to get your attention. When you're running away, when you're resisting, when you're digging your heels in, resisting to God, he may send a calamity, a crisis, a challenge your way. Don't be surprised by it. Because he wants to make a path correction, a course change for you. So you may, he may do that to get, and it may be a small little thing or a large thing or something in between, but he's going to, again, want to get your attention. His will is going to get done. And again, as I said, with you or without you, but he'd love to have you do it because he specializes you, calling you out for the unique service that he wants you to do. Verse 8, so they asked him, tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? And then we have a note there. They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. Saying, so, you know, guys, it's me. You know, I'm running away from my God. He's telling me to go to Nineveh. I don't want to go to Nineveh. Let's go to Tarshish with you. What have you done? I think another thing we find here is your disobedience will affect others in some way, small or large. Your disobedience will affect others. If you're saying no or been there saying no to God, you're resisting his will where he's directing you. There may be times when you're sleepless at night. You're restless. Uh, there's a heaviness upon you. Uh, you're, you're cranky. Others around you notice the crankiness. You're short with them. Because there's an inner turmoil that you're wrestling with God. And it just spills out in ways to others. And they're affected. Small or large, it's going to affect them. It's going to affect your household. It's going to affect family and others. And it's going to affect the church. When the body of Christ is not all the parts functioning and, and doing their part, the church is out of balance. The church is out of balance. I was like, if my back... One of my vertebrae is out. It's going to affect probably in many ways on how I feel and operate. When the body of Christ is not functioning, some of it is not functioning well, not doing its part, not doing what it's called, it will have a disturbance. So your disobedience will affect others. As we saw here, Jonah's disobedience is affecting those other sailors. Let's pick up verse 11. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to, take the, to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up, throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon me. Instead, the men did their best to row back to the land. They don't want to kill this guy. You know, he's going to drown if he goes out in that water. 
Instead, the men did their best to row back to the land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. They cried out to the Lord. Now, not their gods, but now here, the Lord, Yahweh, Israel's God, Jonah's God. O Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, O Lord, have done as you as pleased. You sent a storm. We want to appease you. We want to do what you want. Interesting almost, are we having a conversion of these pagans on this boat with Jonah? I believe there is, because you've got to look at the next verses. Verse 15, then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. Can you imagine that? You know, all of a sudden, God turns the volume down or the switch down on that storm, and it just settles. You know, what, what experience that would be for those pagans now introduced to the true God, right? And they, they, they react to this. They took Jonah, threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. Verse 16, as this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. To me, that's conversion. Conversion. They're turning away from their gods, to then they're turning to the true God. Verse 17, which everybody knows the story of Jonah in some way. You know, he got swallowed up by a big fish. I hope you'll understand that there's much more to the story of Jonah than being swallowed by a big fish. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. Uh, Someone after the first service came up to me with their study Bible. And it had a comment that back in 1930, there was a, uh, uh, a, a fish, I guess a whale, that, that they found, uh, discovered. They said the mouth was so big and the, the fish was so large that it could swallow a horse. <laughs> I said to the person, now, now we know where the saying is, I could eat a horse, you know, but uh, I'll do some more research before next week and I'll probably come up with some Exclamation! But we don't know what fish it is. It could have been a whale. But you know what? I have a God that can make any fish he wants to do is to swallow a person and keep them alive for three days and three nights. But we're going to get next week, part of the message will be Jesus' commentary on Jonah being three days, three nights in the belly of a fish. The last thing I think we find here is God will redirect your path Once you confess your disobedience and humble yourself. Jonah had nowhere else to turn. Sometimes you will also get there. You have nowhere else to turn except to bend knee, bow your head, plead out to the Lord, rescue me, redeem me out of this situation. And he will if you humble yourself and follow him obediently. Reject your disobedience and humble yourself and he'll return you to where he wants you to be. Where he wants you to be blessed. So let's bring it to a closure. Some things here. God is calling each of us to a task. He's calling each of us to a task. Will you obey or will you run away? Will you obey or run away? Don't think about other people you know that are being called and they've been saying no and digging their heels in. Pray for them. But this is about you. Are you obeying or are you running away? Next, God is calling you to share his grace and truth with everyone, even those you consider your enemy, your enemy. There's people that are hard to get along with. God's introduced you to them in some way, but he wants you to give his grace, love, truth to them. It may be, again, 
just loving them in simple ways that may lead to then, why are you doing this? Why are you showing kindness to me? I've never treated you this well, but you are treating me well. Third thing is, know that your disobedience affects others. Touch it lightly on that, but I think it's an it's a important part of the story of Jonah. There were others in that boat, and God has a plan for their life. But Jonah came, he's disobedient, and they're caught in the storm with him. And you know what? There's probably other people that are caught in your storm that you are in because God wants to wake you up, humble you, and he needs you back to obedience and service. Maybe it may involve you to say, I'm sorry to those people around you saying, I've been resisting God. I confess it to you. I confess it to God. And my disobedience is harming you. And then, are you ready to repent from your disobedience and seek the path God has for you? Turn away from harshness and go to Nineveh. Yet it's not an easy place. And we'll see that as we look at his journey into Nineveh and what happens there. But God will always lead you. He will always, when you're in his will, protect you, deliver you, and bless you abundantly. Don't be a runner. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the word. Holy Spirit, thank you for revealing us the truths of this word that we can take it more than just a story about a guy that got swallowed by a big fish and survived. That it's about a God who wants to protect a, a group of people that are evil. Their wickedness is so intense before the Lord, He wants to give them one more time to hear the truth and to repent. And that the wrath of God could be turned away. It's also about a story of a guy who was used by you. But he said, no, I, I, he put a, a limit on what he would do for you. Lord, help us not to put limits on what we'll do for you. What you're leading us to do. As a church, we ask that. As households and individuals, we ask that. Lord, forgive us when we put limits on what we will do for you. And Lord, if we're running away, if there's runaways here, that they'll stop, come to their senses like that prodigal son and head home. Or for some, they may need to go to a Nineveh and work hard for what you want them to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's sing together uh, 371 and worship together in song and respond in song to the word of the Lord. 371, have thine own way, Lord. Let's stand. Wider than 
only always living in me. Amen. May that be true to the intent of your heart. Lord, have thy own way. Lord, we ask you to have your way with St. David's. May we yield to you and honor you with all that we do. May you bless these households, these families, these individuals to do your will. Help us to stop running away and obey. In Jesus' name, amen.